And when I'm working with a, a face or when I'm working with anything, I'm, I, it's good to think about where the light comes from and where I want my light and the, uh, the shiny parts of my, uh, of my uh, face or my flower or whatever it is. And a reference picture can be quite good. Here I have one that is kind of similar to the one that I drew in Spain. And I just wanted to show you quickly. And I also have a lot of reference pictures um, linked in my classes and in Café Flow. Uh, when you have a reference picture, you can see where the darkest dark is. The darkest dark is on this side. On In this particular picture, the light comes from one side, a little bit from the right. And you can see that her nose gets really dark on one side. It gets really light on top here, a little bit to the right, and then it gets a little bit darker again. She has really dark contrasts in her eye and around her mouth. She has the lightest light on top of her lip that's sticking out and her under lip, which is sticking out and the, um, uh, the chin, which is sticking out. And um, over on this side of her face, it's really dark where the hair is kind of hanging over and her, uh, her face is um, facing from the, from the light. So looking at a, a reference picture can give you all the clues on where to put the darkest dark and the lightest light. Um, and then when you actually do it, uh, or what I do is that I don't I don't fill it in everywhere where I can see it on this picture, because when the uh, when the eyes see something, the brain interprets it, and if you leave stuff out, the brain will fill it in. The brain will add things that are missing, not if nothing is on. I mean, you don't see a face here, for example, but if I don't fill in the whole mouth or the whole uh, side of her face, my brain will still see that it is a face and kind of fill that out uh, inside the brain. Uh, and that the brain does it in a perfect way. I will never be able to do it in a perfect way when I draw and I paint, but my brain will always fill it out perfectly. So leave things out. And that is the, the key. Uh, I think it was, uh, I don't remember who it was, but you were talking about it being overdone. You're overpainting. Tonya, uh, I think you might mention that, that I'm overdoing it. And, and this is a trick um, that you will learn with time. So to know where you think it's overdone or overpainted, you need to kind of go over that line a couple of times before you realize where that line is. So if you have done something that is overdone, that is not a bad thing. That's, that's just one of the steps towards finding what you like and finding that line. You have to cross it a couple of times to, to, to learn to know where it is. If you stop too early, or, or early and never cross that line. You don't know if you, where it is. So don't worry about overdoing it. It's just a way or a, a part of the path of finding the way you like painting and, and your way of, of uh, creating. Uh, so don't worry if you do that. And maybe you do it often. It's not a problem. Just kind of keep going and you will learn that line um, definitely uh, and it will change. So after a while you might want to paint even less or you want to paint something else and you will, this is, this is a, you will never be finished with learning to create and learning to paint. You will always develop and, and um, uh, change in the way you do it. Um, which is really fun when you look through a, a journal or you look through old paintings or you look through your 
photos, you can see that development. It happens all the time. You never stop. It's not that you kind of get up to a level and then you stay there. You, you develop, you change. So...